for this one, they were wondering if we could go through it because we weren't sure if it was SM1 or E1. Because many times, like, I guess there's a possibility of both, but which one prevails because they want the major product. Uh, page, uh, bottom of page three of the SN2 handouts. Is it SN2? Oh, well, the, the, remember, it's the same handout for SN2, SN1, oh, E2, and E1. Is the same <laughs> so let's look at the bottom of the SN2, SN1, E1, E2 handouts. Bottom of page three. So um, this is not a very good nucleophile. So we would expect this to be SN1 or E1, and we would expect that first uh, this guy would leave, and then the nucleophile would come in. All right, so where are we uh, in the handout at the bottom of page three? We have a secondary and a poor nucleophile. A secondary and a poor nucleophile. So the handout says it should be SN1, E1? Mm -hmm. OK. Now let's look at the new note on the new and improved handout right underneath the table. What does it tell us about the SN1 and the E1? Okay, well, this kind of summarizes it. So if you were only going to give one major reaction, which one would it be? SN1. SN1. On the other hand, uh, different instructors have different tastes. But the fact that he said major, uh, he also, um, he didn't say major products. Sometimes in the book, it says this. But in the problem, it just said major product. Well, that really, that answers it right there. What is the major product? Yeah, the SN1 reaction is major by a big margin, right? The E1 is a lot less than the SN1. So it would just be CH3, parentheses 2, CH, OCH, CH32? You would just draw the SN1 product. So the right. only time we'd ever put E1 when they ask for a major product is if it's no nucleophile and it's secondary or tertiary? Yeah, with sulfuric acid. We haven't talked about that together. I don't know if you guys even covered that reaction very much yet. Yeah, I don't think. Well, no, that's like when it's acting as like an acid to do something else. Because the SLC guy who gave that paper with the chart, remember, that I told you about, he didn't put no I'll give you a point to that. Okay. Yeah, all that column means is that when you use sulfuric acid and heat by itself, you get E1. Sulfuric acid and heat by itself gives you E1 right. because sulfuric acid is not a nucleophile. Okay. And it doesn't generate a nucleophile. And All right, so the key, the, the key point there is in case it comes up, sulfuric acid and heat by themselves with no other reagents would give you purely E1. Unless it's... Unless there's no reaction. But That's right, if you have a secondary or tertiary. But generally, if you see heat, it's usually E2. Heat or E1. Heat so tends to favor elimination. Oftentimes, if they put in heat, they want to favor elimination. But, you know, even, even, even here, even if you put in heat, I think you'd still get more of SN1. You can see there's a big uh, majority for SN1. So basically, if they ask you for the major product, if it can go either way, you should say SN1. If they said all possible products, you'd want to try, probably draw both of these. But again, that a little bit depends on the instructor. So it's too bad you don't have the answer key here, um, because uh, the, really the only way to see kind of what they're going for here is to look at the answer keys and see what types of products they generally draw. Um, so uh, I guess we have to do the best of what we can. But if it was me, if they said major product, I would draw SN1. And if they said um, all possible products, I would draw both SN1 and E1. And if they said major product with parenthesis, I don't know what I would do. <laughs> okay, so we should recognize that this is going to be a E2 reaction, right? We have a primary and a strong base. 
Um, let's label the alpha and the beta carbons. So here's going to be the alpha and the beta carbons. So we can draw, we know there's going to be a new double bond between the alpha and the beta carbons. Uh, on this carbon, we know there's an ethyl group and a methyl group. Ethyl and methyl. And on this carbon, we know there's a deuterium and a hydrogen, right? A deuterium and a hydrogen. But you can see there's two different ways we could draw them. We could draw the deuterium pointing up and the hydrogen pointing. Uh, we could draw the deuterium cis to the ethyl. Or we could draw the deuterium cis to the methyl. OK. Um, so those would give us uh, our two possible products here. All right, and the question is, which one are you going to get? Well, first of all, are you going to get are you going to get both, or are you going to get just one of them? Well, just one of them. Just one because it's backside attack. Right. It's not so much the backside attack though. That's for SN2. Right. Um, so, what are we attacking here? Are we attacking a tetrahedral alpha carbon or a trigonal planar alpha carbon? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral. This is a tetrahedral alpha carbon, right? Remember, this is all going to happen in one step. Well, when you attack something tetrahedral, do you get one product or two products? One. Yeah. Um, how about if you were attacking somebody trigonal planar? Two. Two. Okay. So we're only going to get one of these. Which one is it? Well, it took me about an hour to explain that on the video, so we probably don't want to use our time for that. But I sent you the link um, for that, and you can watch it uh, on the video. It's also covered in the second language book. I think the second language book has good coverage of this. Um, but uh, you can also watch this uh, in the video. You have, to, um, you have to do the anti-periclanar transition state, um, and you might have to rotate the molecule, which is best done with Newman projections. Um, so there's Newman projections and anti-periclanar transition states, and I go over all of that in about an hour uh, on that video. And they also talk about that in the second language book. So uh, I guess since we only have about 20 minutes left, that's probably not the best thing for us to do um, right now. But while we're on the topic, how about uh, if we were going to do an E1? With an E1, now we can't do an E1 here because this is primary, but just pretend. If we were going to do an E1, would we get one product or two products? Two. Two. Um, why? Because we're attacking a trigonal planar alpha carbon, because it's a carbocation, right? When you attack something trigonal planar, you get two products. Um, so if they asked you to draw all products, you would draw both of these. Um, now, uh, yeah. Same with SN1, right? With SN1, you also get two products. Of course, they're not cis and trans anymore, they're R and S. Uh, but yeah, SN1 is attacking something trigonal planar, so it gives you two products. Um, and E1 is attacking a trigonal planar carbocation, so it gives you two products. But, um, and SN2 and E2 are attacking tetrahedral alpha carbons, so they both give you one product. But the stereochemistry, how you work it out, is very different. The stereochemistry for SN2 is easy, right? You just make a single swap to get the opposite configuration for an SN2. But getting the right stereochemistry for E2 takes a lot of work. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks.